the lineups for game five. The Lakers haven't had a three game losing streak all season, but they came perilously close to losing three in a row to Portland after establishing a 3 1 lead and almost saw their whole season go up in smoke. Let's check with them on. All right, thanks, Bob. I spent some time in the Lakers locker room. It is as serious in that locker room before the game as it has been the entire playoff series. Ron Harper told me one of the reasons because they all realize they have not been good in closeout games. He says this game tonight is not about offense. He told his team it's about defense. He said let's go out be a great defensive team and go home with the win. One little update on Kobe Bryant. He told me today was the first day that he's been able to walk with no pain in that ankle. Let's go down to Jim Gray. All right. Thank you very much. Ahmad. Travis Best will be playing tonight with a slightly separated left shoulder. He did it in a collision with Shaq in the fourth quarter. Spoke to him before the game. He feels he will be able to play. However, he doesn't think he's going to be very effective. Now, if you take a look at the Pacers locker room, they are still a very, very confident group. When you look at their board, bulletin board, they feel they're going to win this series four games to three. I spoke to Larry Bird, and he told me the following. we got to play three straight game sevens. However, I don't want my guys thinking about game six or game seven. Just this one tonight. He went on to say that he doesn't feel as though it is his last game. It really bothers him that this is the L.A. Lakers. They're celebrating here a little too early. There'll be no celebration. As I left the room, he said, Jim, write this down. We will win this game. Bob? 48 minutes of playing time to prove Bird a profit or to end his coaching career tonight. We've talked so much about the mental approach of the Pacers. For the Lakers, to me, if they play this game like they have a cushion that they only have to win one of the next three, it could really cost them. Their thought process is should be close this out tonight. The officials are Bennett Salvatore, Jack Neese, Danny Crawford. Here's Shaquille O'Neal dumping it inside to Glenn Rice, knocked away from him, but a foul. One of the things we don't talk enough about with Shaquille O'Neal's is his ability to find the open man and to pass the basketball. He has such an awareness in this offense where his teammates are going to be. That was a beautiful little drop down pass to Glenn Rice. Glenn Rice was upset that he didn't play down the stretch in game three. He got fourth quarter and overtime minutes in game four but didn't do much with them. He didn't score at all in 14 minutes of overtime and fourth quarter play and had only one field goal attempt a lot of his minutes went to that guy Rick Fox. It'll be interesting to see also too tonight Bob the Lakers have gotten off the slow starts twice here. I think it's important they don't dig themselves a hole. That's been the problem in these closeout games double digit deficits that they have not been able to play out of. Mark Jackson with the ball might have to play a longer stretch than usual tonight if Travis Mess effectiveness is limited by the shoulder injury. Reggie Miller with the Pacers first shot. Good execution by the Pacers. A little back screen by Reggie. Pops the ball. A little point blank shot. Miller on Bryant. Rice with the screen. Rose takes Kobe on the switch. And the foul will go against the Lakers. Watch Reggie come over and set the little back screen on Shaquille O'Neal. Just a little hesitation by Harper to help just enough to free up Reggie. That's what you have to do. You have to execute well to get good shots. The offensive foul a moment ago was called against Glenn Rice. Here's Smith, who shot 11 for 14 in game four. Looking to go to work on Shaq. And tips in his own miss. He had 24 points in game four after 22 combined in the first three games. Well his game is based completely on confidence. Bob we saw that in game four he had his first five shots. He was terrific the rest of the night. It's a good start for him. Looking for O'Neal but an illegal defense is going to be called first. You can see the little anxiety here in Shaquille O'Neal normally doesn't go for the shot block this early in the game. He leaves his feet. Smith's a little up and under move. More importantly, the second effort. We don't see enough of that from Rick Smith. Normally makes the first effort. Can't quite get to the second one. Lakers inbound after the illegal defense call. Here's Harper. Short jumper. Out of bounds to the Lakers. The Pacers know that if they're going to win tonight, too, they have to rebound the ball. When you go back to game four, they gave up three offensive rebounds in overtime for six points. And we showed you the one that Kobe got late to finish it off. Glenn Rice. Harper keeps it alive. In the paint to Shaq, but before he dunks it, there's a call. 
Dale Davis hit with his first. In big games, normally you don't shoot well to start the game. A little tight, that means you really make the effort to get to the boards, and that's what the Lakers have done here early. Second shot. Pacers have two team fouls. Lakers don't have any yet. Head of the key, AC Green. Overshot it badly, and Rose takes it for Indiana. Green has Smiths. Turns and banks it in, but they wave it off. An illegal defense called on the Lakers before the shot. Actually, a bad break there for Indiana. Well, Shaquille O'Neal was going to help back on Rick Smiths. They had A.C. Green posted against him, and he knew that he could he was going to be in trouble down there. So Shaq went in a little too soon and got the uh, got the uh, warning. In the corner, Reggie for three. You throw out game one where he was one of 16. He has been brilliant. Jackson over to help Smiths with O'Neal, leaving Harper open, and Harper hits the uncontested three. Talk about a guy who's played well. He's shooting 53% in the finals, averaging in double figures, and has really picked up the slack, especially in the game that Kobe missed with injury. Smiths over Shaq. Picking up where he left off. That shooting touch is there for him. It's, that's why it's so important for the Pacers to get him going early. When he plays well early, it just picks up all phases of his game. A.C. Green returns it to Harper. Now Shaq, seven on the shot clock. Harper to the baseline. And he gets the bounce. You can see Rick Smith just not quick enough to move his feet. Harper drives baseline. One more slide and he gets there. Couldn't get there. And Harper with the layup. Reggie comes off the screen. Green takes him on a switch. That leaves Harper on Davis, who backs him into the paint and takes the turnaround. That's way off. That was almost too tempting for Davis. Perhaps not the shot Indiana wanted after all. Bryant. Oh. Count the basket plus the foul. AC Green off the Bryant assist. How about the unselfishness of Kobe Bryant? He had a wide open 10 foot jump shot there, Bob. He wouldn't have passed that shot up last year. He has so much confidence in his ability that he can score his points that he gives the ball up underneath to AC Green. He says, you know what? I'll get him going. Maybe get him a three point play. Remember now, Kobe only had six points at halftime of game four, finished up with 28. He knows he can score his points. Game tied at nine. The foul is on Smith's his first. O'Neal's got Smith's this time. And as he goes for the shot, Shaq fouled it. He shoved it back in his face, but he picks up his first foul. I think they're going to say he got him on the way up. The block was clean, as you said, Bob, but on the way up, it looked like he hit him on the arm. And we know how vital it is for the Lakers to keep Shaq on the floor and out of foul trouble. Smith hits the first. They don't expect him to play Shaq on even terms, but game four was as close to Dutch treat as they've gotten out of him. Well, they'd love to have those kind of points. Obviously, they'll take 15 plus. More importantly, you saw the rebounding disparity. That's where Rick Smith really struggles. He just doesn't have the mobility, Bob, to take that extra step and get that rebound. The 12 year veteran from the Netherlands hits them both. We've played more than four minutes. Neither Kobe Bryant nor Shaquille O'Neal has taken a shot yet for the Lakers. Kobe out of a crowd to Shaq. He pulls up, line drive jumper no good, and Davis takes the rebound. Shot that like he shoots many of his free throws, no arc at all. Out of the corner, Jalen Rose for three. Remember now, going into game four, the Pacers had not sh shot the three-point shot well. They hit 10 the other night in the game. That is their strength. If they shoot it well from beyond the three, get to the free throw line, usually they're in every game and have a chance to win. Kobe over Davis. Shaq up in a crowd. Counted plus one. 
Again, the offensive rebounding, and you see the Indiana Pacers coaching staff, they, they just, they know they cannot stop them defensively and then allow them to get a second shot. But once again, Shaquille, there's a lot of ways to score in this league. You don't always have to be the primary guy, and when he gets it in there, it's way too late, Bob. And look at that foul, though. Just a touch on the shoulder. There's no way in the world you can stop Shaq. That's like a gnat landing on him. So you can't stop the basket. You pick up, if you're Rick Smith's your second foul, and maybe have to go to the bench, although Bird hasn't pulled him yet. Sam Perkins is heading for the scorer's table. And this one, Smith's is off to another good start. The Pacers ask for time. By his own choice, after three years as the Pacers head coach, Larry Bird has no more than three games remaining on the Indiana bench, and he knows he'll miss it. I'll miss it. I mean, I had a blast the last three years. Uh, I've always said I'm not a very good coach, but the three of us together are pretty good. Uh, I've enjoyed uh, every minute of it. I feel like I'm getting better each time out. If you're talking about situations, understanding the game, um, big time crunch plays, and what to run, He's probably the man to go talk to. Uh, just to have a chance to share some of the experiences and some of the stuff that he's been through has really helped us, you know, as a team. And uh, just to see him go, it would be a big loss for everyone. Larry Bird is a champion. His players know it, and they feed off of it. When he's over on that bench, they listen. And you look down at the other bench, Bill Jackson is the champion also. That's why these two guys lead these teams during the finals because both of these teams believe in their coaches. Dale Davis driving on O'Neal. The jumper is short. Smith's is out. Perkins is in for Indiana. No changes in the Laker lineup yet. Six seconds to shoot. Ron Harper against Mark Jackson, backing him in for the turnaround. The rebound is taken by Perkins. Green on Miller. Jackson comes out and wants the ball. And Reggie gives it up. Had it for about half a second before giving it back. Perkins with three big threes in game four. Cross court to Davis. His jump shot is good. <laughs> I'm not sure that's the way Larry Bird drew that up. Starts out with Miller, ends up Perkins penetrating to Dale Davis for a jumper. <laughs> Davis almost looked stunned. He was so alone, they were practically daring him to take it, and he made it. O'Neal. That rims out for him. Jalen Rose on the move against Glenn Rice, and a foul before the shot. That's Rice's second. And it will bring Rick Fox off the bench. And normally about the five minute mark or the four minute mark, we also see Robert Ory come in for AC Green. Usually that's the way Phil Jackson substitutes. And I think what the Lakers would like to do is stay as close as they can right now. Robert Ory's been playing great, Bob. He came in the other night at 17 points. More importantly, four in that overtime when they got that big win. Dale Davis back out to Mark Jackson. Jackson with a very difficult shot, but Davis with the finish. Well, that's where he's at his best, around the basket where he can use that muscle, that strength, rebound the ball, and go up with power. Kobe Bryant. Shaq. Again, offensive rebound, and we talk about the Lakers, one of the best in the NBA at getting second shots. O'Neal hurrying back on defense, makes the interception. But it's taken away from him by Jalen Rose. Reggie pumps up a three. Hit it plus the foul. Chance for a four-point play. Shaquille O'Neal had the ball popped in one hand. It looked like he started to pass it. And the ball, he, he saw the defender step in. He tried to pull it back, and he couldn't. Watch this now. He's got one hand on it. He's going to try to pass it. Oh, he tries to pull it back, and he can't. Rose picks it up, and it's going to end up in a four-point play here as Reggie Miller squares up, and Harper hits him as he goes by, and this is almost automatic. Reggie has now hit 32 of 33 foul shots in the finals. Robert Ory getting set to check in for L.A. The Lakers trail it by nine in the early going. Bryant over Jalen Rose. You just can't stop that shot. Rose is right up on him. 
the, well, Bob, the importance of being able to shoot the ball, when you're that lightning quick and create a shot, you've got to get up and play a guy. Now that gives him freedom to beat you off the dribble. Rose off the screen. Answers at the other end. Great execution right now by Indiana. They're in a real flow, but more importantly, they've taken advantage of some Laker mistakes to get some easy points. And Los Angeles asked for time. The Pacers have got off to a great start. They've hit nine of their first 13 shots, and we've talked about Laker closeout games. Now look at this. Down by nine here early, they lose. Down by 14, they lose. Down by 11, they lose. This has been their pattern in closeout games. Down here, nine already. Robert Ory in the game for AC Green. Let's see if they can chip into this lead before the quarter's over. Robert Ory has had a generally effective stint when he's come in for the Lakers off the bench. In hockey terms, his plus minus has been excellent in the playoffs and especially in the finals. Shaq with the short jumper. Well, you know, in fairness, Robert Ory is the better player. He should be the starter, but Phil likes to buy some minutes with AC Green about the first seven and the first and the first seven and the third. But there's no question Ory's the better player. Sometimes that's why they get off the slow start. Sam Perkins hits another. They are a fun team to watch play. Perkins trying to contend with O'Neal out to Ori for a three of his own that's no good. Miller with the rebound. O'Neal begging Davis to shoot and he accommodates him. That's almost the same spot that he hit his other jump shot. Everybody's shooting the ball well. Indiana very relaxed. L.A. starting out very tight here to start the game. Indiana by 12. Ori on the drive. A tough hoop. He had 17 points and six rebounds in game four, including the first two L.A. baskets in overtime. Well, you see, he's more aggressive offensively. Usually he's a very reluctant scorer. He's coming in and attacking as soon as he gets off that bench. Rose lost it. Bryant has it. Jackson is back. Kobe spins on it and scores. He just measured him, just took his time, didn't try to jump over him, got the ball right where he wanted, spun, and then he got a nice angle to use the glass. An eight-point difference now. Jalen Rose. The Pacers have tried five three-pointers, and they've made them all. Bold prediction. If they continue to shoot threes at that clip, we're going back to LA. Shot. And the Lakers, what they're saying is, you know, it's almost very similar to games three and four against Portland. Take the big surge, just try to hang around and try to wear the Pacers down as the game goes on. Shaq tries to get deeper and deeper post position the longer the game goes. Nice pass from Rose to Miller. Comes with the right hand too. Normally, Jalen Rose does not. Dribble the ball or pass with the right hand. Strictly a lefty. That was a great pass. Ori left alone in the corner. Won't take it. Six on the shot clock as Kobe measures Jalen Rose and misses the jump shot. Shaq over the back of Perkins to tip it to himself. And now it's Ori for three. Those offensive rebounds. I know that Dick Carter, Larry Bird, Rick Carlisle, the staff, one of the things they wrote on the board before the game is we gave up three offensive round rebounds in overtime that killed us. The Lakers are staying in the game here early with their rebounding. Perkins steps back. It would have been a two-pointer. He couldn't quite get behind the arc, although that's what he was trying to do. Harper threw it away. He saw it the whole way. Ori ran the floor beautifully. He was open. But when Harper jumped in the air to pass it, it looked like the ball just sort of squirted out of his hands. Never had good control. Dale Davis out. Austin Crozier in. The Pacers have made 13 of their first 18. That's 72%. Of course, the disappointing aspect, one of the many disappointing aspects of game four from Indiana's perspective, 
They shot 50% overall. They were nearly perfect from the free throw line. They were lights out from three point range. They had the home crowd behind them. Shaq fouled out midway through overtime and they still lost. Rose, good look at a three. Six for six. Now Phil Jackson could not be happy about the Laker defense right now. Now you got to give Indiana credit. They're really executing here to start the game, but they're getting wide open shots, Bob. Not even a hand in their face. Ori on the drive. And even though the difference is still the same, nine points, as when Ori replaced Green, Ori has been effective. Jackson backing in against Bryant. Last second, Harper from near midcourt. And an impressive first quarter. A 39 point first quarter. That, that's amazing. I mean, the Pacers are a terrific offensive team. The Indiana Pacers are the best three point shooting team in the NBA and they were better than 50 percent from beyond the arc in game four. But this is almost unbelievable. Six for six in the early going and every one of them uncontested. These are the kind of looks you dream of. Jalen Rose here. And, and when you take a look at the shot chart they're 15 of 20 and four of their misses have been in the lane. So they have shot the ball so well. Well, the one thing I've always felt though sometimes threes early a lot of success early from three can sometimes be fool's goal. They cannot live with that. They must continue to attack if it's there shoot it but don't just think you're going to win this game shooting threes. Second quarter begins with Reggie Miller on the bench and Derek McKee on the floor for the first time tonight. Travis Best normally starts the second quarter for the Pacers. He's got the bad shoulder and Jackson has been in from the outset. Here's Austin Crozier. Quick first step on Robert Ory. Knocked away on his way to the hoop. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Ory's had a difficult time playing Crozier's quickness. Ory's a terrific team defender. Phil Jackson wants him to do a better job on Crozier individually. Jalen Rose trying to slide past Brian Shaw and Shaw just into the game is hit with his first foul. Now Bob you're talking about Mark Jackson's minutes. He's a guy that doesn't really play a high energy game. He's a quarterback. He takes his time. He plays into a rhythm so he can play a lot of minutes if he stays out of foul trouble. He's not one of those guys that uses speed. He thinks about what he's doing and he takes his time. Jalen Rose keeping it alive but it's into the hands of Brian. O'Neal turns on Perkins with the hook. Sam touched it last. But you can see the presence of Shaquille going to the board. Sam's trying to hold him off with one arm and rebound with one and he just knocked the ball out of bounds. That's just a subtle little thing trying to keep him off the board. Into Kobe quick catch and shoot. And Indiana with the 11 point lead brings it back. Perkins another three. They finally missed one. It's poked away from O'Neal by Crozier. Perkins thought about it. Gives it up to Jalen Rose. Now he has it back. OK you want me to I will but Shaq comes out and gets a piece of it. Now they sling it ahead to O'Neal and look out. How about that. But how about he jumped out and blocked the shot ran the floor caught it like a tight end and finished it on the run. And this guy's the most dominant player. That was a great agile play by Shaq. Perkins thought that was an uncontested three. O'Neal closed ground on him remarkably fast off the Rose miss Shaq grabs the rebound. That's exactly what the Lakers want to do. Hang around, hang around, be close at halftime. Rick Fox. His three is long. Jackson to the front court. Against Kobe Bryant. His pass intercepted by Brian Shaw. Shaw tries to go all the way. And a jump ball is called. 
Welcome back to Indianapolis in the second quarter. Pacers lead by nine. I'm Jim Gray. Spoke to Larry Bird before the game. He said that he felt they lost in games two and game four as they had some leads or they had a pretty substantial run going. And he said then we'd go four or five minutes where we just didn't get much accomplished. He said we have to avoid that tonight. Well, he'd like to try and avoid that here. They've already missed four shots here in the second quarter. In the first quarter, they only missed five in the entire quarter. So this is one of these lapses that he's trying to avoid. Bob? Jim thanks a bit later than usual Travis best makes his first appearance now normally when we see Travis best Phil Jackson immediately counters with Derek Fisher so let's see if Fisher gets ready to check into the game Derek McKee made an excellent defensive play in tying Brian Shaw up on the drive before the timeout but now there's a violation on the jump ball that goes against the Pacers and with O'Neal looking on. Now I take it back and went against the Lakers and they award the ball to Indiana. And here is Fisher as you predicted getting ready to come in. It's that matchup that Phil likes because Fisher's able to do a good job of squaring up best and not getting beat with dribble penetration forces best sometimes to over dribble the ball. Shaw's on Jalen Rose. Rose spinning on him and Bennett Salvatore says hold on. Number two on Shaw. He leaves. Fisher comes in. against Bryant this time challenging him and scoring and you can immediately see what happened there when Bill Jackson saw they were going to go to Rose inside he moves Kobe Bryant Owen de defensively against him Rose said I'm not going to let that bother me backed him right down shot right over the top of Kobe Bryant turns the corner against Crozier but can't finish with the reverse Indiana looking to improve on an 11 point lead Rose again against Kobe Bryant. This time a little baby hook. We saw that so much in the Portland series. Mike Dunleavy said, we're going to go at Kobe Bryant. We're going to make him defend. We're going to make him play both ends of the floor. Especially he's going to play heavy minutes. Back-to-back -back scores by Rose. And Rose now has 15. Bryant tries to answer and does. And this young guy is so good. I tell you, he is using the stage of the NBA Finals here to show everybody what a great player he is. He's got Rose now. Jalen into the paint and an offensive foul. See, Robert Ory plays as a power forward on the floor, but he, he actually, remember when he played with Houston, was a small forward when they won championships. So he can move his feet. He can get out there and defend against a smaller player. Watch him. He finds a spot. He picks a spot here. And what happens there, Rose just sort of dips his shoulder. People saw the end of that where he stepped on Ory's foot, but he used his shoulder there as he turns it over right there, just bumps him with that left shoulder, and then he falls after the play is over. Looks like he took a little nasty fall there on his tailbone. The foul is number one on Rose. O'Neal is back for the Lakers. Miller is back for the Pacers. He's on Rice, and Glenn's jumper rims out. Both teams have gone very small, really only one big man on the floor and really four perimeter players for both teams now. But it's a very, very big man. Reggie, short. Fisher chases it to the corner. They whip it inside to O'Neal. Gets his own rebound, takes it up against half the Indiana team, and he's fouled. This is what we've seen throughout the series, Bob. It happens where Indiana will start the game out and they'll do a nice job defensively on Shaq and they'll keep him away from the basket. But as the game goes on, look how close he is to the basket. He starts getting into that paint and then once again the great offensive rebound. But it appears he just wears you down to finally he starts catching it so deep in there that you can't defend him. Shaq is averaging 38 points a game through the first four games of the finals. 
missing his first free throw attempt. No matter who they throw at him, he just keeps throwing points in. Well, the big thing about it is, you know, Perkins and Smith both occupy him with their shooting. Dale Davis doesn't. So when he's on the floor against Dale Davis, he really becomes a great help defender and really blocks up the lane. That's why it's important for Smith and Perkins to be able to be out there and make some shots. He missed them both. And it's still an 11 point Pacer lead. Foul at the other end. Looks like Kobe. That'll be his first. A little veteran trick there. Kobe saw that with Steve Smith in the Portland series, but as he cuts across the lane, he puts his arm out there just conveniently enough where Kobe will reach out and grab it. Rose kicked it away. Perkins picks it up. They've got six seconds to shoot. Rose for three. Defense. He forced him to use the clock. He shot it about three feet behind the three-point line. Jalen Rose having a great second period here, posting up and now shooting the three. Glenn Rice. Plus they fouled him. So that quiets the crowd a bit. Three ABA championship banners hang from the rafters of the Fieldhouse. Those old Pacers were a close-knit group, and guys like Mel Daniels and George McGinnis, Bob Nedelinki, Freddie Lewis have been on hand for these games this week. Their former coach, Bobby Slick Leonard, is courtside. He's one of the broadcasters for the Indiana Pacers. The late Roger Brown was also an important part of that team. We're reminded this week about the travail of the greatest player in ABA history, our friend Julius Irvin. We all are very fond of him throughout basketball and here at NBC. And as you may know, his teenage son, Corey, has been missing since late May. Encouraging news today. Police in Florida believe they've confirmed a sighting of Corey about a week or so ago. Although he has not been found yet, at least that gives us reason for hope. And our hearts go out to Julius and Turk and their entire family. Bobby was my teammate, and Julius, we're thinking about you and sending our love, buddy. I never met a better guy. Here's Best. Travis Best. If the left shoulder is bothering him, it didn't on that shot. Glenn Rice from the head of the key. Miller clutches the rebound. The Pacers lead by 13. to the corner. Shaq is there on it. Best at the top of the circle. Travis Best has hit two in a row. Indiana's in a great rhythm right now offensively. And that last timeout, Larry Bird told his team, just play. Don't look at the scoreboard. Fisher, a nearly impossible shot, partially blocked, scooped up by Miller. He's got Rose on his left, gives it up to him, and he slams it home. A 17 point lead for the Pacers. Fisher tries to cut into it, misses the three, and there's a whistle. It goes against the Lakers. Reggie makes a great pass out of the double team. Best catch it, sort of fakes the pass and freezes the defense, hits the jumper, and then Indiana off and running off a turnover. Reggie Miller, normally not a playmaker, finds his partner on the wing, Jalen Rose, with a powerful finish. Rose feeling it now, contests the double team. And the foul will go against Jalen. How often have we seen Derek Fisher step in there and take that offensive foul? Bird does not like it. But let's take a look here. Jalen Rose with a hop, and he runs right over the top of Derek Fisher. Now, Larry Bird does not like it. More importantly, he's got to keep Rose out of foul trouble on the floor because he's playing so well right now. Might have had a little bit too much adrenaline going that time. That was his second foul. Robert Ory's jumper is waved off, a three-second violation. To hear the Pacers and many of their fans tell it, you could call that on Shaq a dozen times a game or more. Well, right now, it's no mystery who's the most desperate team, who has to win the game. That's the Pacers. They're making all the aggressive plays. The Lakers right now are on their heels, reacting rather than creating. And India's shooting 68%. 
Jalen Rose hits the reverse. See, Larry Bird is a coach, but as he was the player. If I'm going, get me the ball. Rose has it going right now, and he's calling his number. O'Neal. The reason why they don't call him for hanging on the rim there, Sam Perkins was down and underneath, and if he came down, he would have squashed poor Sam like a bug. Here's Rose again. Stripped, but Crozier is there to pick it up. Perkins camped out for three. Ori rebounds. Indiana already has 54 points in this game. They're on the way to a 65-point first half here if they keep it up. O'Neal, nice move. But again, we talk so much about, about how you close out quarters and halves. Indiana has been so dominant. They don't want to take a little snooze here and allow the Lakers to cut this into about a 10 or so point game going into half. Big finish here if you're a Pacer fan. Best turns the corner, finds Miller in the corner. And the three spins out. Sneaking back is Harper. Rose to contest him. Knocked it away. No foul. It was clean. Rose wants a three, but it's short. And Crozier may have fouled going after the rebound against Shaq. And that is the call, his first. Now that shot was too quick by Jalen Rose. Bob, you said it very good while ago. He, his adrenaline is flowing right now. Well, you can see tonight, Jalen Rose has got the best of that matchup. He's sitting on the bench right now because he has two fouls, 335 to go. Larry Bird trying to protect him here with the lead. Once again, the Lakers, no panic by them. They, they feel like you just got to keep playing, take that hit. Try to get this maybe under 10 going in at halftime. Robert Ory straight away for three. Missed it badly. Rick Smith back on the floor, comes up with a loose ball. Now can Rick Smith work himself back into the game? Sitting a long time. Reggie Miller to the left hand to finish it. Now Reggie's got that move probably from Kobe Bryant when they played together in the summertime. That was a gorgeous one-on-one -on -one move. We don't see that much from Reggie. Kobe right back at the other end, but this one is long. Now Phil Jackson can't like that. That's a little too quick. You got to go inside to your big guy. The Pacers go inside to McKee, who was fouled. Watch Reggie Miller, kind of overshadowed by the 22 Jalen Rose has put up in the first half. This bucket gives him 13. A little hesitation. Looks like he's going to go back the other way, then continues on with that baseline. Nice move there by Reggie. The foul a moment ago was on Bryant, his second, before the shot. So it's Pacer ball from the side. Here's Miller leaning in, drawing the foul, getting the shot off, and very nearly turning it into a three-point play. And you can see the strategy once again. We talked about this is what Portland did. Now, Kobe is a first-team all-league defender. Reggie now is attacking him as he moves over with Jalen Rose out. The great little pump fake. I'm sure Reggie's thinking, that's what I wish I would have done at the end of game four. Maybe I would have gotten a foul on a couple free throws and, and sent that game into overtime. But when I talked to him about it, Bob, he said the thing that he was concerned about was he wasn't sure how much time was left on the clock and he wanted to make sure he got the shot off. Otherwise, he said, I would have faked and tried to draw the foul. So, you know, Reggie knew what was going on. He was just concerned about getting the shot off. He knew there wasn't enough time to pass it to the then open Smiths, but there might have been enough time to go with the fake and hope for the foul. A lot of speculation after the game, or actually discussion, it was too late to speculate, about whether or not they should have gone for two and the tie to play a second overtime with Shaq having fouled out. Here is O'Neal. And it rolls home for him. Shaq has scored 16 in this first half. But his team still trails by 17. Travis Best leaves it up there for Dale Davis. Nice pass from Best, and Davis with the finish. He scored eight in the first half. Let the Mark Jackson play. Look like you're going to shoot it. You just slow it up, and actually, it's a lob pass. Laurie tried to hook a pass inside to Shaq, who tosses Smith to the floor, all 265 pounds of him, like he was dealing with a child. 
Well, all this occurs after the play, actually. You're going to see Shaq go up strong, and there's where <laughs> Rick Smith goes down. And that will be his third foul. So he went out there and played about a minute and a half before he picked up his third. And this is the problem with Smith when he gets early fouls. It's tough for him to get his rhythm because he stiffens up on the bench. You see that look on Smith's face? How can this be? I get bounced to the floor and you blow the whistle on me? Now it's Perkins on O'Neill. Shaq, a little hop into the paint, and he cans the jumper. That's that little pet move of his, a little rhythm across the lane, a little fading jump shot. The fans very unhappy, felt like that that should have been a foul on Shaq, not on Rick Smith. Reggie Miller. Shaw is up on him. Dale Davis. Six seconds to shoot. Davis on the drive. Shaq bothers the shot. And Shaw comes away with it for L.A. Glenn Rice was bumped and an Indiana foul with 105 to play in the half. When you're struggling to get a shot, Put it down on the floor and see if you can get to the free throw line. That's what Glenn Rice does here. And folks, you can log on to NBA.com and follow tonight's game with Sync TV, the ultimate online companion to each NBA Finals broadcast. Sync TV provides fans with real-time stats and news and the ability to interact with special guest hosts and other fans online. NBA.com, your cutting-edge way to follow the NBA Finals. Normally very accurate. Rice misses the first. Kobe Bryant saddled with three fouls. Looks on. When you look up at that scoreboard at halftime, what do you think Phil Jackson's going to be talking to his team about when you see Pacers right now sitting on 60 points? Hey Jackson, go the way to go. Travis Best out of the backcourt against a bit of pressure. comes Reggie. Fake Shaw off his feet. Good look at the three. He was so great running away from that basketball. He just set the man up the entire way. It looks like he was going the other side of the floor. Pops out and hits the three. Ori from beyond the arc at the other end. No good. McKee the rebound. Can they get a two for one here? A quick one. Ball batted away by Fisher. But then Fisher commits the foul. Trying to take it away from Best. Is there anybody better off the ball? Look, he cuts through the lane. Looks like he's going to go out that side. Comes off a double screen. No awareness by the Lakers. Brian Shaw has got to be yelling. He's coming out your side so you can switch on that. Reggie with the great pump fake in the three. But he has been playing terrific basketball since that game one nightmare, Bob, where he shot one of 16. There is the seldom seen Jean Tabak on the floor for the last half minute. Perkins sits. Best with the aching left shoulder. Missed the first. Makes the second. And you can bet Jean Tabak will foul Shaq if that ball goes inside. He will not give him a layup. He's in there to take the foul if they need it. It's the Pacers by 20. Here's Ori. They go to Shaq who just touches it back to Ori. But they fouled him in that split second. He didn't want possession. He tapped it right back to Robert Ori. Well, that's why he was in the game. Now what's going to happen is Sam Perkins will come back in the game for offense and John Tobik will go out. So Bird using the old offensive defensive strategy there to protect Perkins with fouls. He's now one for four at the line tonight as Crozier and Perkins return. Shaq averaging 38 points a game so far in the finals as we mentioned earlier. The record 
for final scoring average. Michael Jordan 41 points a game against the Suns in 93. Rick Barry for the Warriors against the 76ers averaged almost 41, 40.8 and 67. And Elgin Baylor for the Lakers against the Celtics in 62, 40.6. Shaq at 38 is fourth. Here comes Reggie Miller. You know he wants to pull up for three. This one is off. One of the few things that's gone wrong in this first half for the Pacers. Now, if that shot would have gone in, you would have just had to shake your head. But what a magnificent first half of basketball. 24 minutes of the Indiana Pacers, 64 points. They lead by 19. Terrific three-point shooting by both Rose and Reggie Miller. Just as game four appeared to be played at a different pace than most games in the 90s and in the year 2000, what about this game? This is like a throwback to the 70s or early 80s, especially on the Pacers' side. 64-45, the halftime score. Reggie Miller's with Jim Gray. All right, thank you very much, Bob. 18 for Reggie Miller here in the first half. How do you guys avoid these lapses that you've had in other games when you've had a lead here in the second half? Well, we got to keep putting the ball in the basket, but also we can raise our our level of defense a little bit. I think we're doing a good job on Shaq of conversion. You know, they're missing a lot of shots, and we're making a lot of shots, and that's been the difference. Now you're 8 from 15 from the three-point line. Can you guys win by falling in love with that shot and continuing to shoot it? No, but that sets up a lot of our game. When we get a clicking from the three-point range, I think Rick, Dale, and even Austin can operate a little bit easier down, down post. All right, Reggie, good luck in the second half. 40 points between him and Jalen Rose. Back to you, Bob. Indiana ball as we start the second half. Mark Jackson to bring it out of the backcourt. Bob, something to watch for now. They like to get Rick Smith started in the third period. Remember, Rose and Miller have the hot hand. They have to be very careful not to go away from those two guys by trying to get Smith back into the game. Let's see what happens here. This foul is Harper's second. Mark Jackson finding Smiths. He begins the second half with a miss. A whistle before Rice can deliver his pass. And it's Dale Davis's second as we check with him on. All right, thanks, Bob. Phil Jackson telling his team at halftime the reason they got 45 points, they've been shooting 45%. Also, the real thing, only nine assists. The thing he told them, like he told them before the game, it's all about defense. First of all, they got to stop and then score. Stop them and then go down and score. Let's go back to Bob. Come on, thanks. Here's Kobe Bryant. Two on the shot clock. Kobe's got to get it off, and Miller blocked it. Mark Jackson. Off the glass and in. It circled the rim and then dropped. Kobe Bryant now, Bob, has taken 37 shots in the last game and a half without getting to the free throw line. Reggie with the steal. Jackson flips it back in, but into the arms of Rice. Kobe goes right by Smiths, blows the layup. But Shaq is there to finish. Now Rick Smith is a smart thing there. He didn't reach in and foul and get his fourth. Stay on the floor. You're, you're up 19. Give your team some help here. They're going to need you. Mark Jackson. Shaq out on him. He launches a three. Kobe underneath to clear the boards. Here's Glenn Rice. Catch. Fire underneath for Shaq. Difficult catch on his part. And a jump ball as Jackson got a piece of it. Three consecutive defensive plays by the Pacers. Miller blocks the shot by Bryant. Miller with a steal. And now watch this. Jackson against Shaq, who had a difficult catch to make, did that. Then Jackson reaches in and ties him up long enough for the jump ball. The, the Lakers are a half step to a step behind the Pacers tonight in everything that they're doing. They have got to find some emotion to work themselves back in this game. Normally they do that by going to Kobe and Shaq. Here is Kobe exploding to the hoop and get your hand out of the way as he slams that one down. Well, those are the kind of plays that energize your team. Kobe going right to the basket. But Ahmad said well ago they've got to get some stops on the defensive end. Jalen Rose. Shaq rebounds and Danny Crawford stops play. 
spotting an Indiana foul. It's Dale Davis. Kobe Bryant going right to the basket. Looks like his ankle's feeling much better. The powerful finish over Rick Smith. Now can the Lakers find a way to get some rhythm into their offense. They've got a few stops here defensively. Can they start to work themselves back in the game. The foul was Dale Davis's third. AC Green guarded by Smith bounces to Shaq five seconds to shoot O'Neal jumper in the lane short Harper there on the offensive glass brings it back out with a pass to Rice. Shaq posts up Davis fell down Smith comes over late Shaq scores and the foul on Smith is his fourth. It, it's impossible to play Shaquille O'Neal when he gets up that lane area and cuts to the basket. Now watch him as he just cuts in here bangs into Dale Davis Dale Davis goes down and who's there once again Rick Smith picking up that touch foul. Now Larry Bird normally takes him out of the game here. You know what Bob he might be saying you know what he's not going to be playing that many minutes anyway. I might as well leave him on the floor and see if I can get something out of him because Perkins has been playing the crunch time minutes. Wildly inconsistent from the line Shaq is having a bad night in game five he's one for six. And play is stopped once more. Let's go to Jim Gray. Thanks Bob at halftime Larry Bird told his guys hey keep taking the threes if they give us the open looks pull up and take them. Bird also told his team there's no pressure on us just keep playing avoid looking at the scoreboard and finally I spoke to Jalen Rose he took a nasty spill his tailbone and his lower back is bothering him said it's going to slow him here in the second half but he's just going to continue to play because of the situation of the series. Bob here is Jalen Rose continuing to play well right on time there Jim and you know what when the ball goes in the basket your tailbone always feels a little bit better than it did when you're missing some open jump shots. Yeah losing is the real pain in there's the no tailbone. Kobe Bryant leaning in throwing up a scoop shot that's no good and AC Green with a nice tip. Again the Indiana Pacers they must defensive rebound you force a difficult shot by Kobe and you don't clean up your defensive backboard. Smith's the jumper is there. Very aggressive play by Smith. I don't think Shaq is going to contest many of those shots. He just got to get to his spot and go up and shoot it. Pacers 70, Lakers 53. Kobe Bryant off the dribble, spins, tries to slice through three defenders, can't do it. Rice has it, five seconds to shoot. His double pump is there for him. And with the left hand, looked like Dale Davis was going to block that shot. Jalen Rose misses at the other end. Harper has it for L.A. Rice against Rose. Pair of Michigan products. Rice on the team that won the national title in 89. Looking for his first NBA title. A.C. Green wasn't the first option but was able to finish that possession. Well Larry Bird's going to take a timeout. He does not like what he sees defensively right now. Well a bit of uneasiness creeping into the field house as the Lakers have crept back to within 13. Now when you look at the shooting percentages you see Indiana shoot such a high percentage in the first half. That was because they played terrific defense got some early scores got some quick looks at threes. Your defense starts to break down you depend on your offense your percentages start to come down. They have to start defending the Lakers. Rick Smith's out to Jalen Rose. Down low to Dale Davis against A.C. Green. The bounce to Miller. The swing to Jackson. Two seconds to shoot. Jackson beats the shot clock and hits. What a great play that time. Mark Jackson understanding the clock winding down. That ball went in the basket just as the shot clock went off. Kobe against Reggie. O'Neal can't control the rebound. Jackson can. He threw it behind Miller though. And the Pacers lose it. Kobe's now 4 of 14 for the game. So he's not shooting the ball well. More importantly, he's not getting to the free throw line. And he has only one assist. So really looking for his own shot here a lot tonight. Harper's pass deflected out of bounds by Rose. 
Much more aggression out of Indiana as they've come out of that timeout. Bill Jackson's going to take a timeout. He's not happy with the offensive flow of the Lakers as they walk over to talk, uh, to, talk to their head coach. Welcome back to Indianapolis in the third quarter. I'm Jim Gray. Reggie Miller twisted his right foot and his right ankle last trip down for the Pacers when the ball went out of bounds. He had it worked on by the training staff during the timeout. He just kind of massaged it. He relaced up his shoe. He told him he's all right and he will continue and he's back out on the court. Bob. Jim thanks. There he is guarding Kobe. Glenn Rice catch and shoot it's off Jackson has the rebound he fires ahead to Rose who tried to sneak out but it's off his hands and Bryant scoops it up for L.A. Kobe stutter stepping on Reggie spinning in the paint a double pump that's off by a mile the follow how did he get that ball he missed the shot but where did he come from here's Dale Davis. Reggie now driving on Kobe get it out says Shaq. You get a sense that Kobe trying to do a little too much right now. He has a tendency to start trying to get him back in the game. There's the big block by Shaq. Smiths. Got it. It's a big six minutes right now for the Lakers. They're down 17. Are they going to work themselves back into this game? They have got to get this, I think, to about 8, 9, 10 points going in. Right now, the Pacers playing so very well. Glenn Rice against Jalen Rose finds Harper in the corner for three. Seems, seems like he comes up with those big baskets. They're quiet baskets, but they just chip into that lead just at the right time for the Lakers. Smiths again. That was a great set play that time. They back screen Shaq and looked like Smith was going to cut to the basket and he just stepped back. Now he's a 7 4 guy stepping back to shoot a jump shot. A dozen for Smiths. Rice on the move. Smiths contesting. If that's on Rick, it's five. And Larry Bird is not happy. He felt like that Glenn Rice jumped in on this play and created the contact. We'll have to see, did Rick Smith go straight up? Did his hands come down? Did, was he leaning in? Or did Glenn Rice create this contact, Bob? What do you think about this here as he jumps up? I think what got Smith in, front of, in problem there was he turned sideways at the last second. Rick Smith, who scored 24 points in 22 minutes in game four, goes out here having scored 12 in just 14 minutes so in contrast to the first three games he's been very effective the last couple at least when he's been able to stay on the floor. Well, I think the point you made earlier was you know he's not going to get the rebound to shot blocks or do the other thing but if he's going to be on the floor he has to make shots he has to make Shaq guard him. Rice steps up and misses the second one. He must keep Shaq occupied so he burns energy on both ends of the floor. Poked away from Rose by A.C. Green. And A.C. chopped him for the foul. Lakers not yet over the limit. Pace your ball from the side. Rice on Rose, jumper over him. And these two guys have it on cruise control. Rose and Miller. The other, the rest of the players just feed off of their energy. Right now, they feel like they can score at any time, regardless of who's guarding them. Jalen Rose has 26. Kobe Bryant. He shot one for eight in the third quarter so far. Jackson pushes it up the floor. Deals to the side for Reggie. Sam Perkins and Bryant hooked him. That looks like four on Kobe. 
It's been a tough night for Kobe Bryant after the magnificent finish the other night in game four. Here's Jalen Rose. Just taking his time, getting his rhythm, shooting over his fellow Michigan alum, Glenn Rice. And then here's the foul as Sam Perkins realizes the Lakers switch. They have a mismatch. Kobe just reaches out and grabs him. Remember now, Phil Jackson is a coach that will let his players, his star players, stay on the floor with fouls. We saw Kobe pick up four about the first play of the game in the third quarter of game four, and he's shooting four of 17 tonight. Phil looks up, he says, look, we're down 17 points, four minutes to go. We're going to get back into it. We're going to have to do it right now. No need to take him out of the game, Bob. Mass substitutions. Ori Fox and Shaw for the Lakers. Crozier in for the Pacers. Jackson backing in on Kobe Bryant who's got to be careful Jackson knows that tries to tip in his own miss and can't do it Bryant Shaw Shaw on the drive deals to Shaq and they'll take it away Indiana's doing a nice job tonight of keeping that lane closed down Bob how many times tonight have we seen Shaq be able to get that ball in deep post position what it's forcing the Lakers to do they're playing a lot of one on one basketball right now which is out of character for them they're a power basketball team Jackson bounces it to Miller rebounds the miss brings it back outside to Rose who is bumped by Fox how about Mark Jackson on 35 year old legs you mentioned earlier and of course it's true that he doesn't play an energetic game overall he kind of plays at a controlled pace but in these last few minutes he's been everywhere he plays with great efficiency he does not waste energy accepting congrats from his teammates on the bench Rose looks for his 27th point here. Monday on the nightly news the return of America's great grizzly bears they're powerful smart and dangerous but were driven from the land 50 years ago is the controversial plan to bring them back safe find out Monday on NBC's nightly news with Tom Brokaw you know Jalen Rose has an interesting routine at the free throw line to be a very good free throw shooter he never bounces the ball normally you see guys bounce the ball he just sort of throws the ball up in his hands till he feels like he has the rhythm and then he shoots his free throw. Had it knocked away, got it back, looking for Shaq. Lots of pacers there. O'Neal recovers it and scores. It was Kobe and Shaq against the world there. There were five white shirts in the vicinity, and somehow the two of them combined for the bucket. Well, you can see in Kobe, he has such competitive instincts and such confidence in his ability. The team has gotten down, his ankles feeling better, and he's trying to do way too much right now, trying to go too fast. And it really has hurt his team here in this third quarter. Jalen Rose spinning, dealing out to Crozier for the jumper. It would have been a two, or he takes the rebound. Jack is out there on the floor. He's not getting in the lane. Now, that's a tough shot, but we saw the other night they had 66 points in the paint. That was out of the paint. So if you're the Pacers, you have to say, you know what? We defended that pretty well. That's why Shaq's the MVP. He just made a great shot. And he scored 27. Reggie comes off the screen, bounces it to Crozier, who goes up for the dunk. Fox contests him and fouls him. And it's also going to be a flagrant as Rick Fox came over. We're going to rule that he did not make an attempt to play on the ball. That was an excessively hard foul. He slips the screen here, and Rick Fox is going to come over right there. And you can see the left hand reach up and grab him by the shoulder, and that's when it was caused. Now, Bob, a lot of times you say, why? Because you don't want to get guys injured. When you get up in the air like that, you have no balance, and a, and a blow to the shoulder or to the head can really uh, cause an injury. Austin Crozier, who grew up a Laker fan, Rooting against Larry Bird and all those Boston L.A. finals as he grew up in Santa Monica hits both free throws. Well, you can see right there at the last minute Rick Fox pulled down with his left arm. That's why he got the flagrant.
So the Lakers started the second half 19 points down. As of now, they've whittled only two points off the deficit. They got to within 13, but Indiana has withstood that. Well, their initial defense has been much better, and again, what they've done is they've taken away Shaq's deep post position, and now the Lakers are playing one-on-one -on -one basketball, and Phil Jackson can't like that. Mark Jackson and Bryant fouled him. That's five. Mark Jackson is doing a nice job now. He doesn't do it with quickness, but he leans that ball out just enough, and you see the foul there. There can be no argument from Kobe Bryant. He did not get any part of the basketball. He got all arm and wrist. Bryant goes out. Ron Harper replaces him. Mark Jackson with that distinctive free throw shooting style. He's already extended the right arm to gauge the shot. And he makes them both. He does that plumb bomb. You know that little move Bobby to, to, to shoot that shot. I try to do that putting and it doesn't help me at all. So I, I'm glad it works for him at the free throw line. Whatever you did at the line worked for you though. <laughs> 83 percent for your career. Most guys would take that happily. Here's O'Neal with the jump hook over Perkins and Crozier who is a tough customer grabs the rebound. Jalen Rose to Crozier who's guarded by Ori. Five seconds on the shot clock. Here's Sam Perkins. The fake on Shaq. They're not going to get it off in time. 24 second violation. That was a very good defensive sequence that time by the Lakers. They really locked in and Ori did a nice job on Austin Crozier. He got him deep down there in the lane and forced him to kick the ball out. And Perkins is not a guy that's going to be able to create for you. He's a catch and shoot guy. Last minute of the third. Harper to Shaq. Well, that Shaq's easiest basket of this period. It was off the uh, great penetration by Ron Harper as he got in the lane. 29 for O'Neal. Austin Crozier out of the double team to Mark Jackson. Foul line jumper. He had a double team. They switched it to Lakers did when they went down to double team it to help Shaw with Crozier. Just found the open man. That's what the Pacers do. Three double teams, not get open shots. a three doesn't get it the rebound to Crozier lots of time now for the Pacers to take the final shot of the third quarter and you think Miller wouldn't love to shoot a three here at the end of this period Reggie had it knocked away O'Neal picks it up they've got four seconds it's Shaw finding Ori decent shot and it draws air in the end all the Lakers did was spin their wheels for 12 minutes in the third quarter down 19 at the half down 19 heading for the fourth. Fourth quarter of game five. I'm reminded of a situation that in some ways is parallel. Larry Bird's last final as a player 1987 with the Celtics they lost the first two games to the Lakers in L.A. They won game three and then they dropped game four at home in heartbreaking fashion on the baby hook by magic just as his Pacers lost game four at home in a heartbreaker down three one and everybody counting them out. They refused to let the Lakers win at Boston Garden. They sucked it up in one game five and forced the series back to L.A. Where Pat Riley's Lakers did win it in game six. Here's Shaw as the fourth quarter begins, shooting air from three. Ori tried to save it, but into the arms of Perkins. So now in Larry Bird's last final as a coach, first and last, it looks like the Pacers might repeat that game five performance. Reggie Miller was fouled and had a chance at another four point play. Derek Fisher's going to get a technical, so Reggie Miller, if that's a three point shot, will shoot four free throws here. Question is, was his foot on the line? Take a look here. Was this a three? It looks like he's behind the line. 
so that's going to be three. And then the technical, so Reggie will shoot four free throws here because he is their best free throw shooter. Fisher was very upset at that call. Jackie Knees rings him up with the tee. What odds do you give me that he makes all four of them? I like his chances here. He's in a great rhythm tonight. So do I, so we have no bet. And no bet. <laughs> now, Bob, it's interesting. In that third period, I said sometimes you start falling in love with that three-point shot. It can be fool's goal. In that third period, Indiana took only one three. So they started attacking the basket. They did not stay back there and just shoot three-point shots. Very smart. You know, if that shot had dropped and if Fisher had had the same reaction, we could have seen a real rarity, a five-point play. Should have said, what's the bets on Reggie hitting the rim on these four free throws? It's an all net. And he's 37 for 38 now in the finals. You love that sound as a shooter. When it goes through it, it's nothing. That little swish noise that that net makes. And Reggie Miller has heard it more often than most. Brian Shaw. On fire at the end of the Portland series and consistently off against Indiana. Jackson for three. Crozier tipped it to the side, but it's out of bounds. Well, the things we talked about before the game, the Pacers are doing that tonight. They're playing with great pride. Their stars are leading them. They're saying to themselves, we are not going to let the Lakers celebrate on our court. And they obviously believe they can still win this series. Rick Fox. Had it knocked away by Jalen Rose. Laker ball out of bounds. Boy, Shaq is just not even getting the chance to touch the ball right now. The pace of the game is picked up exactly the way the Pacers want it. Here's another technical foul. It looked like Rose gave Fox a little bit of a shoulder, and Fox came back at him. Well, Fox has got to stay away from it. He, he, he's going over and sort of taunting here with Jalen Rose. We'll have to see here as we sort through stuff what the call is exactly going to be. Double technical. Fox and Reggie Miller. And now another technical. Is that going to be on Mark Jackson? Yes, it is. Now Larry Bird cannot be happy about that. His team is playing so well. They have a 23-point lead. You don't want to emotionally throw a spark into the Lakers right now. The Lakers are really struggling, Bob, to have anything happen. Don't do something here that's going to incite them. More importantly, that if they don't win the game tonight, that they can take back with them at home in game six. The first two technicals would have canceled each other out, but since two of the three were on the Pacers, once they added one on Jackson, actually it was Miller, not Rose, who chucked uh, Fox a little bit and that's why Reggie got the other technical and with the extra T on the Pacers Fox shot it for L.A. O'Neal in a crowd left hand no closure with the rebound. Reggie Miller for three. Pacers by 25. And Miller has scored 25. So much fun to watch. We saw Bird in his career. Now Miller tonight. What a beautiful thing to see. Talk so often about the Indiana Pacers being the best three-point shooting team in the NBA. Here's one of the best three-point shooters. Look at Reggie Miller. Now remember he just hit four free throws where he did nothing but touch the bottom of the net. Great confidence. Just give you a little idea exactly. How, look how far almost at the hash mark that he's shooting this three point shot. And Reggie is having some fun tonight. The Pacers nine of 18 from the three point line 16 of 17 from the free throw line. They have done everything right tonight and lead by 25 Bob. 
Travis Knight makes a rare appearance for the Lakers. Kobe Bryant is back in. I'd say Phil Jackson's probably going to give this team maybe three minutes, four minutes to make a push. If they don't, probably sit down Kobe and Shaq and say, we're going to game six. Derek Fisher with the fake on Jackson and misses the jumper. Another rebound for Crozier. Crozier drives by Knight. And a foul on the play against Travis Knight. Well, they really have confidence in Austin Crozier. This all started in the first two games in the Staples Center in Los Angeles where he was attacking and he has stayed in that attack mode the entire playoff series here in the finals. If the Pacers win tonight and it certainly looks like they will game six will be Monday not Sunday Monday 9 Eastern 6 Pacific from the Staples Center in Los Angeles. Is 27. O'Neal guarded by Perkins. Jackson there with the help, and Shaq hits the jump hook. He scored 31. Crozier overnight. Flat footed rebound to Kobe. Pulls up for three. This has not been his night. Laurie almost took it from Rose. Jalen now brings the dribble to the front court. It appears to me Kobe has been so hyped up tonight to get that first championship ring. He's just been out of sync offensively, and you got to give the Pacers defense, Bob, a lot of credit. They've done a nice job. Still in the out of ball, six seconds on the shot clock. Speaking of Kobe, he's four for 18 overall, and he's missed his last six. Now he's taken 45 shots in the last game and three quarters and has not attempted a free throw. Most of it from the perimeter, obviously. Miller finds Perkins. Big smooth with the fake. Back to Reggie. Did he beat the shot clock? He did not. But that shows you the kind of groove he's in. You were speaking of that sound that the net makes. He doesn't even draw iron on a three. It's so clean. Well, look how deep he is once again out on the floor. O'Neal in the lane, immediate catch and shoot, no good. Inside nine minutes now. Miller, the fake on Kobe, the drive by Shaq, slings it outside to Jackson, retreats to the corner, takes the return, pumps up a three, but Bennett Salvatore spotted a three-second violation before the release. Well, Reggie Miller did a nice job. He drove baseline, and he kicked it out, and he ran right to the three-point line once again. Three-second violation because they thought Mark Jackson, Pacers felt he was going to take the shot. The extra pass is what got the violation. I think what Phil Jackson is hoping right now for his team is that somehow they can find a little rhythm to finish this game. Something to feel good about as they go home, especially Kobe and Shaq. That is their two stars. The Lakers' biggest loss this season actually came in the playoffs. 29 points against Portland on their home floor in game two of the Western Conference Finals. They trail here by 23. Well, what we've seen tonight from the Pacers also, too, Bob, is much better defense. The Lakers are averaging in this series almost 107 points a game. And in the three wins, they have scored over 100 points. In their one loss, the Pacers held them to 91 points. It looks like defensively they might keep them under 100 again, which would bode very well for them. Of course, they could give them 100 tonight. Right. And pace themselves to score about 120. And a Laker foul. It's Travis Knight, and it's his second. Phil Jackson tried to put Travis Knight in to play against Austin Crozier, maybe thinking uh, this guy could maybe defend him a little bit. See, also we found out, you know, during playoff series in, in a game like this where it looks like you're not going to win, you might look for something that can help you in the next game. 
And if, if Travis Knight could go in and play closer a little bit, maybe Phil might do that. That, that wasn't the case tonight. Reggie lost it. What a foul. The Lakers are not yet over the limit. They will be on their next foul. The Pacers don't have a team foul yet in the fourth quarter. None of which matters very much with a 23 point difference and less than eight minutes on the clock. Miller. Fisher on him. Jalen Rose. Jumper spins out. Look at Crozier hustling on the offensive glass, and he got walloped as he pulled in the rebound. This is why Larry Bird loves Austin Crozier. He loves how hard he works. And you know, Bob, it's an amazing thing. This young guy really didn't play for two years. But while he wasn't playing, he was getting better. And you can see right there just a great effort on his part that says a lot for a young guy to work in practice and get better. Tonight, if you log on to NBA.com and follow the game with Sync TV, you can chat with Mike D'Antoni, former Nuggets coach, and Antonio Davis. So that's the Antonio and Dan Tony show tonight. Bit of a tongue twister. Kobe Bryant. Fancy dribbling, but the jumper is long. Double foul here. It's going to be on Crozier and Shaquille O'Neal. So it'll be a double foul. And what they'll do is they'll jump it up at center court. Watch this now. Crozier is going to try to do his best just to keep him off the boards. They get themselves locked up. And right there is where they call the double foul. Results in a jump ball of which Shaquille O'Neal should be able to control this tip. Tip this ball back to Kobe Bryant or to Robert Ory. Austin Crozier weighs 235 pounds. He was giving up about 100 pounds in that exchange. It was just the second foul for each. Good look at a three, and he hits it. Well, that's what they want him to do. Out of the double team, spot up and make that three. And Larry Bird does not want to leave Glenn Rice. Again, you don't want to let a guy get some looks in a game like this and will carry over to the next game. This one goes against Indiana. It's Jalen Rose, and it's his third. You know, this is not the first time that Indiana and Los Angeles have met in the finals. In 1970, the ABA's Indiana Pacers met the L.A. Stars, who later became the Utah Stars. There's Bobby Slick Leonard, who was the coach of the three-time ABA champions, and one of those titles came at the expense of L.A. Four games to two in 1970. There's Roger Brown, who was one of the great stars of the ABA. There's Freddie Lewis. My man Freddie pulls up with that red, white, and blue ball and cans the jumper. That looked like Bob Nettolicki. Bill Sharman, who later coached the Lakers to greatness and played on so many terrific Celtic teams, was the coach of the L.A. Stars. There's Mel Daniels, who was with the Pacers organization still and was a great front court player for them. And Bobby Slick Leonard, a player in the early pioneer days of the NBA when much of the travel was by train. And one of the founders, really, of the ABA and coach of great Pacers teams here in the late 60s and in the 70s. Robert Ory out of the corner. And a foul on the rebound. Sam Perkins is called for. The ABA existed for only nine seasons. The Pacers made the final five times and won it three of those times. Here's Derek Fisher fouled by Crozier. I tell you, nothing is going to be easy here at the end of this game going to the basket. A lot of hard fouls. The referees are really going to have to stay on top of what's going on. Last possession, a lot of action after the foul on Shaq. The guys took a couple little shots at him. This is where the referees really have to blow that whistle. 
You know, as you fellas in the NBA learned after the merger, you especially in Philadelphia, because guys like Caldwell Jones and Dr. J and George McGinnis were on your team. There were a lot of players in the old ABA who were underrated. Some of them got to show their stuff in the NBA, like Dr. J. Others, like Roger Brown and Willie Wise and James Silas, had their best years in the relative obscurity of the ABA, and they were great players, all of them. Here's Austin Crozier. Back up top to Jalen Rose. He goes down the lane by Shaq and lays it in. Jalen Rose has been terrific from start to finish. Jim Gray had said his tailbone was bothering him a little bit at halftime, but I have not seen any problem in his movement as Shaq swings in there and hits that little jump shot. So this is a good sign for Indiana that you don't see the after effects of that hard foul or that hard fall that Rose took. Shaq stripped it from Rose, who can't believe that he wasn't fouled. Derek Fisher unleashes a three. Nothing but white shirts underneath, and McKee takes it. How long does Phil keep Shaq and Kobe in the game? Now, remember, Kobe has had a bad ankle. Shaq has played a lot of minutes. At what point in time does he say this game is done? Big smooth, Sam Perkins. It ought to be done now. But the last thing you want if you're Phil with a 3-2 three, three, lead going home is for one of your star players to get hurt at the end of this game. It looked like a shot that worked like a pass. Kobe to Shaq, but Shaq couldn't hit it either. Crozier. You know what Phil might be doing? He might be wanting to feel the taste of this beating they're getting right tonight from the Pacers. He might want them to fly home all night feeling this going into game six, Bob. You know, he's always thinking of motivational tools the one thing, though, he's got to be very careful about, again, is injury. That can change a playoff series in a heartbeat. This is a nice moment. Not just Miller going out. To a tremendous ovation after scoring 25, 18 of them in the first half. Their last game here this season, no matter the outcome of the series. But what's also nice is that Chris Mullen will get some minutes. Glenn Rice misses on the three. Crozier takes the rebound. Chris Mullen is a five-time All-Star. Probably a candidate for the Hall of Fame. Once a 25-point-a-game scorer with Golden State. Two-time Olympic gold medalist. Teammate of Larry Bird on the Dream Team in 92. And now when he finally gets to an NBA final, he's near the end of his career and relegated to the bench. He's barely played in this series and hasn't scored yet. Well, Larry Bird said he had to go early in the season and tell Chris Mullen his minutes were going to be cut back because Jalen Rose is going to be a starter. He said, I didn't realize they were going to be cut back so drastically, but he said, this guy has been a real pro all season long. It's like John Sally's getting ready to step into the game here for the Lakers, see if he comes in for Shaquille O'Neal. That'll be it for Shaq at the 424 mark. I think it's a great move by Phil Jackson. And so Sam Perkins, who needs to conserve all the energy that remains in that 39-year-old body, goes out, and John Tabak apparently will get the mop-up work. Sure, Larry Bird is saying to himself right now, Kit, is there any way that I can possibly bottle what happened here tonight and take that with us on the plane. But you know what? That can't happen. They're going to have to go out to the Staples Center and in front of that L.A. crowd find a way to play with the energy they have played with tonight. This crowd has really lifted them tonight. John Tabak gets his name in the scorebook. Kobe. Dribbling like crazy, then delivering the pass. Here's Fisher into the lane. Knocked away from him. Two Bryant for the jumper. That's no good. Ori over the back of Crozier and Ori with the foul. Now Jonathan Bender will check into the game. A little penetration here, and John Tabak being part of the action here. Now remember, this is the guy along with 
Sam Perkins that tried to simulate Shaquille O'Neal as they prepared for this series. And when the Pacers played him in game one and Shaq went for 43, they realized that the real Shaq was the real deal. Yeah, no case of mistaken identity possible there. <laughs> Shaq had 35 points, 11 rebounds, played 42 minutes tonight. And, and you know, as much as this might sound crazy, he had 35, but it wasn't the dominating 35. You know, Bobby he had the points, but not the kind of points that crush the spirits of your team. Here's John Sally, his replacement, and his first two points. John Sally, kind of an amazing story. Out of the NBA for three years, did some work in television. And despite that demerit on his resume, coming from the world of TV, they let him come back and put on a uniform. And speaking of Sally, he has picked his spots very well. He was a true contributor on championship teams with the Pistons. Then he hooks on with the Bulls in 96, gets a ring, and along for the ride here in Los Angeles with a chance to become the first player in NBA history to win rings with three different franchises. This summer on NBC, we have a Law & Order doubleheader every week. Tune in for great drama with Law & Order every Monday and Wednesday all summer long. This is now a 30-point game, 111 to 81. Fisher for three. The rebound to young Jonathan Bender. Well, they have high hope for him, Bob. Here's Mullen looking for a shot. Not selfishly, but the fans would love to see him get an open look and put one down here. Crozier swung by Ori. Tell you, Austin Crozier, how confident and how aggressive is he playing? He's catching that ball in the post. Absolutely no hesitation at all. He spins quickly on Ori, gets the first step. Nobody there at the basket with Shaq out of the game. That will not count, so he'll shoot two free throws. I think now you're going to see Brian Shaw come in for Kobe Bryant. Not one of the nights that Kobe will remember. At game four, he was sensational. Tonight, never really got his rhythm. He shot four for 20. And again, no free throw attempts. Bob, he's had two games now where he's taken a combined 47 shots and not gotten to the free throw line in the entire free uh, the, in the entire series. He's only two of two. Crozier now with 13 after the foul shots. Sally underhands it to Rice. Now he has it back. John Sally on the move through a crowd, drew a whistle. Will they count that? The foul was on John Tabak. Here are the current standings in the 100th U.S. Open Golf Championship. Play was suspended a short time ago at Pebble Beach. Tiger Woods continues to blister the course. Today he had five birdies, two bogeys. He's now at nine under par, and as you see, holds a three-shot lead. Here's Tiger's long birdie putt on the par three 12th. Uh. We'll have special live coverage of the conclusion of the second round tomorrow morning on NBC at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 8.30 a.m. Central, and 6.30 in the morning Pacific Time until the leaders conclude. Our coverage of the third round begins at 1.30 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, 10.30 a.m. Pacific, and will continue until the conclusion of play tomorrow night in prime time. I tell you, Tiger's playing amazing. I was watching that today, the wind, the conditions there, how quick the greens are. And Johnny Miller predicted a wire-to-wire -wire big finish. We'll have to see what happens. Travis Knight had it knocked away from behind by Jalen Rose. Here's Austin Crozier. His pass intercepted by Derek Fisher. A three-on-one Laker break, and it's Shaw, who blows it. Sally recovers it and scores. Some wag behind us yells, what's wrong, John? Can't you dunk anymore? <laughs> Takes a while to work the crimps out when you've been sitting on the bench that long. Here's Jonathan Bender, and he's fouled. This is a 19-year-old kid out of Picayune High School in Mississippi. Went straight to the NBA out of high school. 
The Pacers made a controversial deal sending the highly regarded veteran Antonio Davis to the Toronto Raptors in return for the pick that was Jonathan Bender the fifth pick in the first round. Well I've, I've heard Larry Bird talk about him and he says this guy can shoot with me at the three point line they shoot a lot with each other every day so he's got great range you can see that he's trying to bulk up he's thrown about 20 pounds this year but he is the guy that they're looking forward to along with Al Harrington and some of these younger guys as some of the Pacers get older they can skip step in and not slip so much in the standings but they can stay up at the top we'll have to see what happens. Here is Bender pushed from behind by Devin George the Laker rookie who has been impressive at times but who had a badly sprained ankle during the playoffs and has scarcely gotten off the bench since then. As Bender goes back to the line there's little doubt that he's going to be a significant player maybe a star sometime in the NBA but this year at age 19 a non contributor. Well, you know Bob I asked the, the Pacers about that why they made that deal and they felt like that for Sam Perkins to be successful he needed to be on the floor about 20 minutes a night and they needed the time to get Austin Crozier on the floor so yes they do miss Antonio Davis but Crozier and Perkins it has worked out well they've given the minutes and now they're going to try to develop this young guy for the future. Here's Travis Knight with the jumper and just about everybody has at least some numbers next to their name in the box score tonight. Well, Phil Jackson's going to circle that final score, and it's not going to be so much the margin is. Look what the Pacers have up on the board 116 points already. We still got about a minute and a half. Here's Chris Mullen. And he hits it. Plus the foul. And look at him. Look at Larry Bird. The coaching staff cheers him. Chris smiles. He knows this could be his last basket here in Conseco Fieldhouse. The little pull up jumper he hits him on the arm the great concentration and the follow through by Chris Mullen has always been one of my favorite players moves without the basketball loves to play. And you can see this little wry smile there on Chris Mullen's face as he gets into the books here in the finals. He's always been a great great free throw shooter and as soon as I say that he misses but he was a 90 plus guy in some seasons of his career. Here's Brian Shaw. Ah. Tabak pulls it in, and Jack Neese spots a foul. And it's on Tabak. Just a tad short for Travis Knight. You know, Bob, this is where. The Lakers are really going to count on Phil Jackson also too as they go home to prepare them for game six with his championship experiences and the things he's gone through with the Chicago Bulls. They're going to look for him for his leadership and direction to get them ready. Mullen for three. Rattles out. Devin George. Can't hit a three. Long rebound to Fisher. Swatted away by Mullen. Chase to the side. Sally couldn't corral it. Pacer ball. Larry Bird guaranteed a win to Jim Gray in the locker room before tonight's game. Larry Bird is a man of few words. When he says something, he means it. Devin George was fouled by Jalen Rose. And you know, we didn't have to see much of Travis Best at all tonight. He got a few minutes in the first half. Actually played 10 minutes but we did not see him in the second half so they were able to rest him and Mark Jackson did a nice job tonight. Devin George from Augsburg which is in Minnesota. Game six Monday nine Eastern six Pacific from L.A. George at the free throw line. First Division three college player ever taken in the first round of the NBA draft. So you know when you watch a game like tonight also too with the Lakers as they try to, to get that elusive fourth win you realize the greatness of those Chicago Bulls teams about their ability to close people out and we've talked all along about how the Lakers have struggled. Phil Jackson is trying to teach him how to do that. It is still a process. And he's so used to Michael and Scotty and those guys getting a series over and getting it done. Now the Pacers are going to live to see game six. How will the Lakers respond to what happened here tonight? And can the Pacers 
go out and get two wins. Postgame report on CNBC immediately following the conclusion of tonight's broadcast. A three by Derek Fisher is no good. And now they come to their feet at the field house. Earlier they were chanting Larry, Larry. And now this is his last game here in Indiana as the Pacers coach. And now they're saying thank you. Thank you for bouncing back with this kind of effort. This showed a tremendous amount of pride bought by this Indiana team. They fought from start to finish. It's a big win for them and their franchise. The pride of the team, the passion of its fans. California, here they come. Refusing to bow out, instead they blow the Lakers out. Let's go to Jim Gray. All right, thank you very much, Bob. Reggie, how determined were you guys not to allow the Lakers to celebrate here on the home court? And did you talk about it? Well, we don't want them celebrating at all. You know, understand that we're, we are behind the eight ball, but we want to come out and set the tone early. You know, we got our rhythm early with a lot of good looks at threes. I thought we shot like 70% in that first quarter. I think that carried picked up our defense and that carried throughout the whole game. Reggie how do you bottle this now and take it back to L.A. for game six. Well it would have been nice if we could put some of the points in the paint because I know we're going to have to use them in the Staples Center. But if we bring the same intensity and it really starts with our defense then uh, we got to get into the game quickly there. We can't allow them to get out to a big lead and try to play catch up. You guys uh, you just said about the defense. How did you manage to hold Kobe Bryant to just eight points. Well I think Kobe Bryant held himself to eight points. He had a lot of good looks early. Probably got fouled on a couple shots. But hey that's basketball and we'll take it. Reggie now I know you don't like to look back but does game four kind of stick out because you could have beaten these guys now three in a row. Well they usually could have won game three so it goes either way. Um, you know you never want to you know what if and wish we're down three two but look we have absolutely nothing to lose and everything to gain everyone's expecting to write off write us off anyways let's all let it hang out and go have fun and the confidence now going into game six after this performance well we had a baby pulse coming into this game and now it's beating a little bit louder but like I said we still got a long ways to go all right Reggie congratulations on a great game thanks Jim all right back over to you Bob. Thank you Jim many aspects to a basketball game but in the end you got to put the ball in the hole and that's what the Pacers did tonight. They shot 57 percent overall made 32 of 36 free throws and half their threes 10 of 20 put that all together and here's the most important number game six Monday night.